hello everyone in this video we will see how to set up and use the semantic kernel in our application so we will see that in details in the console application what we have created in the previous video in this video we will see a little bit of theory first and then we implement the semantic kernel in the uh, console application so what is semantic kernel so semantic kernel uh, facilitates the seamless integration of the advanced language models into the applications so it provides the, a unified a unified interface for the uh, accessing the language models from the diverse uh, source like the open ai azure open ai and hugging face and etc so the developers can leverage the semantic kernel to store and retrieve the memories uh, and then create the dynamic prompts and combine the functions using the planner so you have you can have the different functions running automatically uh, and you can plan it when to run based on the when user is asking so it will basically it will help you to automate a lot of things in the behind uh, instead uh, just by interacting through the chat uh, what we ask the model to perform and the the asymmetric kernel will understand it and it will try to run those functions behind with the semantic kernel, developers can enhance the problem, sol pro problem solving creativity and develop AI solutions capable of understanding the natural language, generating the content and answering questions and more. So the, you can see here the overall or the semantic kernel is the, uh, the enhanced, more enhanced version or we can see it is adding the feature basically not the version it is adding the features to the existing uh, Azure Open AI so that the developers can leverage these features to do the lot of AI related processing and task. So to implement this semantic kernel, I'm referring this site here, I uh, have found it and here you can see uh, in the steps, if you go through that, uh, the definition is mentioned same here. The site says here, first we need to include this semantic kernel into our, this package into our project and then we need to initialize the semantic kernel. This is the syntax for that. Uh, and then using that syntax, uh, we configure the kernel and then in that kernel, we'll get the chat completion service and using the chat, this chat service, we'll perform the get chat message content here and we get the output uh, from that. So, but this can also be used to do the AI automation. So we can write the plugins or agent functions and we can add it to the kernel and then the kernel will automatically understand what to execute whenever user is asking something related to those uh, actions or functions which is added to the plugin and uh, added to the kernel. So we'll see that also in the upcoming video. But in this video, we are going to see how to set up this one in the project. So this is the console application which we have created from the previous video so i have built it uh, no error all good so here we will try to add the new functions and try to uh, do the semantic kernel here so first before that we need to include this package microsoft.semantic kernel into our project here so i'll go to the package management here nuget package manager here then i will browse microsoft.semantic kernel or it might take some time. I'll remove this Microsoft. I'll just search the semantic kernel. Okay, here it is. It is Microsoft semantic kernel. So I will add this package into the my project. Okay, so it has been added. Now we will go to the our code. So I'm going to create the new uh, fun uh, function here just to handle the processing the uh, prompt input using the semantic kernel. So before that, I will include this uh, uh, using a statement. So Microsoft dot semantic kernel. Okay, and then here uh, let's create the new method here. So private static async task it will also return the string which is the response coming from the uh, semantic kernel and here we'll give this name as a uh, process 
semantic kernel kernel chat completion and uh, the input will be the user input okay now here we will first of all we'll uh, retrieve this uh, uh, the the key details uh, like the, nothing but the endpoint and the uh, key of the our azure open ai so i'm just going to give this name a little bit the model name then api endpoint name then the key name and then key and uh, here uh, the next is we have to build the kernel so to build the kernel uh, we have to use this refer this is uh, uh, step here so first of all we we can see we are creating the builder first and from the builder we add the uh, add the azure open ai chat completion model to it and then uh, once the builder is done then we retrieve the service here so same way we do here let's we'll go for the little bit all this 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 statement into the one line so here uh, we can do like the kernel i'm going to give this dnlb kernel the, this is the variable name and then here it will be the kernel dot create builder and inside that we'll add the azure open ai chat completion and here we can see we are having different overload method here i'm going to use this one deployment name then endpoint and then the credential here so here you can see it is asking the deployment name i can give this as a my model name okay next is the uh next is the endpoint so endpoint i'm going to give this api endpoint and then i will have the api key and I'm going to give this key value so now once it is done then i will build it so now my kernel builder has created and from this dnlb kernel i will be creating the chat completion service so kernel chat completion service that is equals to uh to dnlb kernel dot get required service using i chat completion service so it will give the i chat completion service and also there is the setting we can pass if you see in the example uh when you do this one there is a uh chat completion the execution setting we can pass it so i'll tell you when it is like whenever do this set search if you want the uh, like how we did in the chat completion we have the chat completion option here right so we'll have the uh, chat here the open ai uh, open ai chat open ai uh, execution setting that we have we can pass it while calling this chat completion here here we are passing the option right same way we need to uh, pass here also if you want we can set it otherwise it will consider the default configurations of that execution settings so here let's create it so where uh, open ai open ai execution setting setting equals to new oh, open ai execution setting here open ai prompt execution setting okay and here we will pass the temperature which will be equals to we'll set the property temperature as a zero here now using this uh, we if we have we have so many other options you can see here we have the execution data max token it can we can set which it can process then uh, these details seeding the user uh, as like user message something like that if you want to do this uh, these different properties we can set here as of now i'm going to set as a temperature here the next is uh, we will perform the chat completion here so where response chat response equals to uh, it will be the uh, uh, it will be the kernel chat completion service dot get 
chat completion content i think we, we can see we are having two different method one is the contents another is the content so this first one is the contents it will return the sequence of the content and then uh, collections of the content and then we have to retrieve it the value from that and this one is the see it will retrieve one content response here so we'll use this one and now here we have the you can see the two overload method one is the the chat history we can pass and then the execution setting here so chat history nothing but what you have talk uh, like what user has asked before and what the model has given the response we can combine it as a user input and that's a, and the agent input and then we will frame the uh, history of that one and then we'll pass it here that is the one way to do that another is same thing we ask the prompt and the execution setting and the kernel parameter we can pass it as a optional and the cancellation token as a default value here. So this method I'm going to use. So he, sorry, this uh, overload method I'm going to use. So I'm going to pass the my prompt, which is nothing but my user input. So here, user input. Then I can pass the execution setting, which is the open AI execution setting, which we have created. And the kernel we can pass here, which is nothing but DNLB kernel. So once it is done, it will give me the response into the chat response here and i will return from here so chat response dot uh, content but before that since we are using the async here so we have to uh, use the await and we can write content chat response dot content okay so we have got the value here so this will content is nothing but the string value which it will be returned from the response so this is what it is now this method which we have created now we can call it in our main method where we ask the user to uh, ask the input here the real line and then it is giving the response in the using the last approach in the last video what we have developed so this method so i'll just replace, replace that one so where response Equals await. This is the method name and then user input. And I will just comment the ever method method calling this one. Okay, here it is. And uh, this is blue. I will do one more thing here. I will just change the font color of the uh, console uh, for the different color of the. Uh, for the uh, the assistant response, the uh, the uh, open AI response. So I'm just going to give the color dot yellow. So now yellow color will be uh, the text which is coming from the assist uh, assistant, which is nothing but the uh, open AI model. Okay. Now I think we have done the changes. Let's build it and run it. Okay. All fine. Start. Okay, so we can ask something. What is the capital of India? Now it is using the semantic kernel and this time it is basically used to improve the accuracy of the result and it can give you the result as much possible. We can do something more on this user input is like this. So we can search something. Um, history of india i'll just try to do some some query more with the text history of india in wiki i'm just trying to find some text uh, about some content and that on that content i will try to generate the top five uh, points on that so from that text so that is the prompt i will ask to run on the model so i'm just copying this one this text okay so uh, this this much and then i'm asking i will just paste it but before that i'm going to ask um, could you please uh, generate generate the main uh, important five bullet points from below text So this is the prompt I'm asking and this is the text I have paste. I'm going to paste it anyway and now run it. So it will it will try to run it and it will give the response there.
you can see it has given the response into this uh, five bullet points from the it has uh, it has uh, read through this text and then it has tried to give the response from here so like that you can uh, uh, generate and play with the um, with the open AI and it, it will help you to generate this so I hope uh, this video was useful to you and I hope you learned something uh, related to the semantic kernel. There are a lot of examples of the semantic kernel you can do. You can There is a uh, GitHub uh, repository where it has a lot of examples you can refer it. If you want I can provide that link in the description box and you can use it to refer those different examples. So uh, based on your use case you can uh, use it and, and you can utilize into your application. So I hope this was useful to you and thank you for watching this video guys.